third density or late second density, let's use the example of pets. When you start petting your pets, when you start giving them attention, you start rewarding them for certain behaviors, you start punishing them for other behaviors, you start calling out their name, and every time they respond, there is some kind of emotional connection because they respond to their name. So they begin to learn that they are them and not you. They begin to learn that they are them and not the door. So this distinction, this specificity begins to arise and becomes really pristine or becomes really heightened to a place where that self-consciousness arises, at which point the entity is harvestable, as the loved one would say, um, or ready for graduation into third density, into a vehicle that has the capacity to reflect on itself, to know that it is itself and not other self, and the capacity to then think and reflect and philosophize, etc. And hence, or then, we have what we currently kind of are. Although we are in the late, very late stages of third density, these bodies are still mostly third density. And so, this is the shift that we're currently experiencing, as you've heard Corey speak of as well, and Roger. Third going to fourth density. So, let me see. All right, here we kind of get to the main understandings that I want to get across at least give you a sense of. Fourth density is the density of love or understanding, also known as the law of love. It's a density governed by the law of love. The intention for the entity, for the spiritual seeker, for the adept in this density, or to become part of this density, or the beginning stages of this density, is to realize the essential non-separation between self and other self. It's kind of what we're doing. You see it all over the place. Um, on planet Earth, the whole topic, the underlying topic of all the controversies and all the political unrest and all the establishments falling apart and all these communities coming together, you can identify the essential desire to know that self and other self are not separate. Does this make sense so far? Cool, the main learn teaching of this density would be opening the heart in faith to the creator and other self. So th these, just to be clear, these are all um, my words, inspired by the Law of One, but this is not directly taken from the Law of One. I'm not actually commenting so much on the Law of One in this session, I'm just giving you my view on it, on, on this topic, not even on the Law of One. I'm using some of the words. But. So the main learned teaching of fourth density is opening the heart in faith to the Creator and other selves. Some of the main means that you have to activate that fourth density understanding in yourself is constant acts of service to others, Opening the heart to other selves. This didn't make it into the slide, but faith. Just having faith, not knowing. Being okay with not knowing, just having faith, trusting. That's an act of opening the heart. It's an act of believing that you're one. It's an act of believing that all is connected to what you are, taking care of you. Trust and transparency between oneself, the levels of one's own psyche, and then extend that towards other self. Community one of the main means, and empathic social interactions, or the beginnings of a social memory complex. When a group of entities become so closely aligned to each other that they can, that they're so in vibrational sync that they think the same thing at the same time, or they can at least think the same thing at the same time, feel the same thing at the same time. So we call that telepathy. It's really just harmony. It's really just resonance, right? If you achieve that resonance with another, you will have the same thoughts. You will have the same feelings. You can experience peek into each other's experience. When you do that at a group level, and you do that to such an extent where each entity of that group is ready to quote unquote merge, and there's no need to keep secret, a secret database of experiences, of privacy. When privacy is no longer a psychological or vibrational issue, I'm not talking about the Facebook privacy and stuff, which is messed up, but I'm talking about the vibrational, psychological need for privacy. When, that's, when there's so much trust and faith that other self is the creator and you are the creator, and that there's an non, essential non-separation, when that's crystal clear, there's no need to hide what you're thinking, what you're feeling, what you've experienced, what you've done. There's also, therefore, acceptance and forgiveness of self. Third, going into fourth density, some of the sub-lessons you could define would be opening the heart of self in love to other selves. Discover your calling, what's your purpose, what makes you tick, why are you here, what's your blueprint, and start acting on that. That also raises your frequency, opens your heart, gives you confidence in the abundant, infinite nature of this reality, of what you're capable of, and so it makes you less restricted, less greedy, less separated. 
Physical reality is really just a dream within consciousness. Um, it's another helpful sub-lesson. You'll wake up to this uh, nevertheless. At, any, at some point in time, you'll wake up to this anyway. But it can also be an activated lesson that you can actually directly experiment with. That physical reality is really just a dream within consciousness. You attract slash create your experiential and circumstantial reality through your beliefs and definitions. Most of you already believe this or at least know about it, and some of you have already practiced this for many years. All things are interconnected. Most of you already understand that as well, but again, how much of it is intellectual and how much of it is taken beyond the mind? How much of that interconnectedness can you see experience? So you can do certain practices to increase that awareness so that it becomes real. It's not just something you talk about with your friends because it's a cool concept, which is also cool, but it's that's shallow awakening. Deep awakening is where it becomes experiential, which has always been my drive, how to take all this, make it as intellectually appealing as possible, but in such a way that it actually drops the participant or the adept into a real experience of it, because if it's not really experienced, it doesn't really transform the entity's perspective, and it doesn't really upgrade to another density. Compassion, one of the sub-lessons. Compassion, you could also say tolerance and patience. The knowledge that you have a higher mind and a higher self, just that alone, just that awareness of, oh, I'm not just here as a single entity having to take care of everything and control everything. I actually have support. It is actually guided by a cosmic self. Just that awareness alone begins to settle into fourth density as well. This life is one of many. Just again, understanding the bigger context of things. Genuine care about the collective. Common challenges and attachments to transcend when letting go of third density vibrations. It's the negative ego. Fourth density still has shit ton of ego in it. Don't worry, you can keep your ego. Fifth density still has ego in it. At sixth density, it begins to really dissolve. So the negative ego is the main issue. It's the negative cycles, the negative thought patterns, the beliefs based in lack. Things are lacking, things are missing, things are not good enough. Um, so we need to be able to let go of that if we want to let go of the third density vibrations. Um, I think Bashar once said something like, instead of trying so hard to, to become a fourth density entity, just stop being a third density entity. That was paraphrased. Perceived separation between oneself and other self. It's all in the mind. It's a perception that's been conditioned over time. You grow up, you uh, bump your toe into a rock, and you learn that this is me, the rock is not me. Someone punches you in the face. They don't seem to care. They don't seem to feel anything. But you're hurting. So that's you. That's them. So there's an environmental aspect to this conditioning, let alone the whole psychological, societal conditioning, which is especially the ones that we have to clear from our fields. The perceived separation between oneself and other self. And again, the practices of oneness, of awareness, of meditation, they will reveal to you that this is not true. It's only perceived. And it doesn't have to be perceived. You can drop that perception. Some other challenges or attachments to transcend when letting go, letting go of third density vibrations is secrecy or suppression of truth, whether in oneself psychologically or out there in the world. Fear, just fear in general. And again, when we start knowing that all is interconnected, that, this, that we are a cosmic being, that all is guided, then the fear begins to drop away. So that whole knowing you have a higher mind and a higher self is very helpful too. Shame, guilt, hatred, anger. Resistance, insistence, or expectations, which are all linear time-based. The reason we are often so worried is because we're always projecting into the future. We have these patterns, we have these fears, these like beliefs, and we project that into a linear timeline. And if things don't seem to go the way we think they should in order for us to be safe and secured, we will feel that resistance, that insistence, the stubbornness, the expectations. Time to let go of that, really just trust, open the heart in faith to the Creator. We are either one or we're not all one. Linear thinking, planning, kind of same thing. Externalized physical reality worldview or Newtonian thinking and feeling. Just this basic standard thing we are conditioned with. It's very similar to perceived separation between myself and yourself. It's just that sense of things are physical, things are dense, things go by gravity, by inertia, and all that whole sense also needs to kind of dissolve or at least become more fluid and malleable. 